Vlogmas. Today is day 17 and I wanted to have a, a bit of a chill video today and switch it up for you rather than showing you my day to day. Rather than this is me working now I'm having lunch. Here I am with Thomas which will probably resume tomorrow. I wanted to just sit here and chill and uh, fulfill a request that I've gotten quite a bit and that is to share with you the books that I read in 2019. Now there is a long list so I will link them all down below and I will not be giving you a detailed account of each one because there are some that honestly are skippable. Um, I read 40 books in 2019 so <laughs> let's just get to it without further ado. These are in no particular order to you but for me they are by the month. Like I just keep a note in my phone all year long because for some reason I like to keep track of it. Last year I wanted to read 15 books and I read 30. This year my reading goal was to read the entire Harry Potter series which I did and I loved it. I'd never read it before and um, if you never have have and you're an adult thinking that you're too old. It is so magical and I loved it. I 10 out of 10 recommend it even if you're like me and you're not into like fantasy or sci-fi or whatever genre Harry Potter is. J.K. Rowling is in I think an echelon and a world of her own and I can't recommend it enough. Now I'm slowly going through the movies. I've watched the first two and um it's quite vivid seeing some of that imagery actually come to life. Okay, so this is the order that I read these books in this year. The first one I read in January was Judgment Detox by Gabby Bernstein and I loved it. I knew that it was going to be very close to home and it was something that I wanted to work on this year which was being less judgmental both of myself and of other people. Um, it was a wonderful read. Definitely recommend. Then we read in the Mary Reads Book Club uh, Becoming by Michelle Obama, which is her autobiography. And it was wonderful. It was very in-depth. It was quite lengthy, but it didn't feel like it. It was really interesting to see her trajectory of her childhood and how she did at school and then how she managed to meet the future president of the United States and how she became the first lady. And I loved learning about some of the behind the scenes stuff of like what it's like to live in the White House. And um, it was really fascinating to me, even as a Canadian, I found it really great. Then I read The Ultimate Weight Loss Solution. I think that was by Dr. Phil. Actually, I listened to to it and it was good. It was good. I don't know how much like takeaway I had. It was obviously an old audiobook because it kept talking about like referencing stuff that wasn't on the CD so I think it was maybe kind of like missing a bit on Audible wasn't super fantastic. Then I listened to again for the second time, I also listened to this last year, Wild Like Me by Louise Pentland. She's one of my favorite YouTubers. She used to be Sprinkle of Glitter and she has a wonderful channel if you've never watched her before. And Wild Like Me was her debut book, like her debut women's fiction book. It's chick lit, which I know not everyone likes that term, but it doesn't bother me. I loved it. She then wrote, Wild About the Girl and Wild Women. Wild Women was on my Christmas list and I have Wild About the Girl and I've actually just started it. So if you're looking for, it's very like Sophie Kinsella or Lindsay Kelk. Um, it's so, so wonderful. I loved it so much. Then I listened to This Will Only Hurt a Little by Busy Phillips and I loved it. I you know, kind of watched Freaks and Geeks and kind of once in a while would watch Dawson Creek but it was Dawson's Creek, Dawson Creek, Dawson's Creek. See, clearly not a super fan, but her book was really wonderful. And if you're going to read it, I would recommend that you listen to it. That one I recommend. Then in the Mary Reads Book Club, we read Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine. And it was a wonderful little read. I'm looking forward to the movie coming out. And then I'm hoping we'll do like a marathon or movie night or something and I'll go and watch it together and it was good. It's not, it's a fiction book about a woman who definitely has some like mental health stuff going on and there's like some twists and turns that I personally never saw coming. It was, it was a good read, I recommend. Um, then The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown, you'll definitely see. I read or listened to quite a few books by Brene Brown this year as I have the last few years. Her books are ones that I feel like you can always come back to. She is 
one of the most prominent thought leaders in my life and someone whose work has changed me I, there's no immeasurably I couldn't even wager a guess how much and the gifts of imperfection is a wonderful reminder that we're all imperfect and that that is a gift as cliche and as cheesy as that sounds and she has hundreds upon thousands of hours of research to back it up and how she presents it is very palatable but also you learn a lot um, it was great that in March I only listened to, or read two books, listened and read like pretty interchangeably, I do both. I listen to books on Audible, I read them on my Kindle, and then if I already have the physical copy, or if it's a book that I really want the physical copy of, I'll buy it. So Girl Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis was another Mary Reads book club pick, and that one was really great. Um, and then I also listened to Karamo, which is the self-titled autobiography by Karamo from Queer Eye. As you'll see this year, I listened to three books from that cast. His was my least favorite. I was, I kept wanting more takeaway. I kept wanting more advice or more tools because he's so good at giving tools on that show. I, I was left wanting more from his book, if we're being honest. Then in April, I listened to the Girl Wash Your Face follow-up, which was Girl Stop Apologizing, and I got way more out of Girl Stop Apologizing than I did Girl Wash Your Face because I am a serial apologizer who has been working on stopping apologizing when I obviously don't need to be apologizing as much as I do. Ha um, partly Canadian, partly female. Um, so yeah, out of those two books, I definitely got more out of that one. Then I listened to Girl Code by Kara Alwil Leba. I listened to that at least once a year and I have for the last probably four years. That book was instrumental in me creating my own business as a side hustle then making it my full-time job and leaving Sun FM years ago and every time I listen to it I get something else out of it and it was part of the Mary Reads book club this year as well. These will all be linked down below. Then I read Life Will Be the Death of Me by Chelsea Handler, which was her book that came out this year. It was less of a comedic romp than her previous ones and more about her journey into therapy and how she managed to heal after losing her brother, her mom, and her dad. Not all at once, but throughout her life, she realized that her behavior was a direct mirror of the pain that she had suppressed. And I thought she told it in such a wonderfully raw way, but also very approachable. And I really respect how she did it because I know that she's helped a lot of people. Um, so yeah, I really liked that one. Then at the end of April, I read The Path Made Clear, which was Oprah's latest book this year. And it's more of a compilation of bits and pieces of her interviews that she's done on Super Soul. And it's divided into different subjects and topics. It's a great book. It's a great book to give. It's a great book. I just kind of have it out in my living room and you can kind of just open it and flip to something and read it. And probably nine times out of 10, you're gonna get something out of it. So that was another great one as well if you're looking for like a last minute Christmas idea. In May I only read two books but that was when I started reading the Harry Potter series. So Harry Potter 1 was in May as well as You Are a Badass at Making Money. I've talked about You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero for years now. That is the number one book that I gift. I couldn't even guess how many copies of that book that, that I have given away. I always have at least two copies in my house in case I feel like I need to give it to somebody. And then her follow-up was You Are a Badass at Making Money and that's another one that I like to listen to about once a year and just kind of remember the tools and the tips and the tricks that she recommends. We're into June. Harry Potter 2, then The Gifts of Imperfection. Again, <laughs> I read that twice or I guess I listened to it twice this year because then it also became um, another installment in the Mayor Reads Book Club and I will do that sometimes. I will listen to or read books more than once in one year or year to year ones that I feel like you can listen to and you can always get something more out of it. Then Ladies Who Punch, which was a book all about the history of the TV show The View, which was pretty fascinating. Um, I kind of stay away from like salacious books that aren't authorized, but this was an off, I don't know if it's authorized, but 
he, the author, had specifically personally interviewed all of the cast members over the years, so it felt a little less gossipy and more truthful. I don't know. It was just like a fun, interesting listen, especially for someone who, you know, grew up really like looking up to, like I used to watch Rosie O'Donnell's talk show and then watch The View and Barbara Walters and Meredith like back in the day. I haven't watched it in years, but when it first started, I really liked it. So that was just a fun one. And then another fun one that I listened to is Ellen's book, Seriously, I'm Kidding. It's from years ago, so um, I'm wondering if she'll have another one out in the next few years, but it was really cool to just kind of remind myself of her background and her history and everything that she's been through because, you know, you see Ellen now, how she is one of the most influential women in the world and the most generous and she's constantly daily changing people's lives in such a dramatic way, but to then also be reminded of her own struggles and, you know, what she's been through was just like a good reminder and it was quite fascinating. This is like the fastest rundown I've ever done of 40 books, but we're gonna do it. In July, I read Naturally Tan, which was the next one on the Queer Eye cast list. I really enjoyed that one. It was wild to learn of his upbringing and then how he met his husband and his career uh, prior to Queer Eye was very successful and fascinating and then have a little bit of background as well to Queer Eye. I found that all of the books, the three that I read, none of them were super focused on the show. It was more of their own experience which I thought was really interesting and maybe that was like contractually what they had to do but his was great. Then I listened to another Kara Alwell Leba book, which I hadn't before. It's called Fearless and Fabulous, 10 Powerful Strategies for Getting Anything You Want in Life. Again, I love her. Um, all of her work to me is just so beneficial and so helpful. If you're not listening to her podcast, Style Your Mind, I also highly recommend that. She just has so much wisdom and so many like tips and tricks. I, I love it. Um, then Harry Potter 3, again, I listened to The Universe Has Your Back, which is by Gabby Bernstein. So you see, there's like a lot of like, um, repeat authors <laughs> this year for me as I was looking for a lot of help and guidance as I made some really difficult decisions this year, a lot like professionally. And The Universe Has Your Back, I first read again at that pivotal time in my life a few years ago when... Um, things were really difficult with Jer and when things were really difficult at Sun and I was looking to branch out and start my own business, that book was so life-changing for me. So it was fun to listen to it again. Then I listened to He Said, She Said, which is by Gigi Gorgeous, who is a YouTuber. She's from Toronto and she now lives in LA and it was her story of transitioning and it was fascinating and it was like a fun easy listen if you've ever watched any of Gigi's videos she has a great way of telling stories and this book was no different in August we as the Mayor Reads book club we read City of Girls and that book was so awesome. It's written by Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love. So yeah, City of Girls was fiction and awesome, and I hope they make it into a movie or like a serial TV show because it was so cool. Another Brene Brown book in August, Rising Strong. <laughs> yep, I mean, all of her books are great. I There's not much to say. I clearly am a Brene Brown super fan. She is on my list of like, I would love to hear her speak. If you haven't watched her Netflix special, that would maybe be a good place to start. And then just all of her books are great. Harry Potter 4. <laughs> then in September, Life Will Be the Death of Me was in the Mayor Reads Book Club. So I listened to it again and I got more out of it the second time around. Harry Potter 5. Then maybe you should talk to someone. I read that book before I made it part of the Married's Book Club because um, it was the, the following month's book. It is so good. That was hands down one of my favorite books this year. So it's a nonfiction written by a therapist and it's a juxtaposition of her practice and she carries you through multiple people's stories that are woven throughout the book. Then her actual like her going to therapy as well and then you get her backstory of how she used to work in television and then she became a therapist and you get some like clinical educational aspects of therapy 
for someone who's been in therapy for five years, I loved this book. It reads like women's fiction, again, like chiclet, but it is nonfiction. Again, if you're looking for a last minute Christmas gift idea, loved, maybe you should talk to someone. And then we came to, at the end of September, the third in my trilogy of listening to books by the Queer Eye guys, and this was Over the Top by Jonathan Van Ness. His was probably my favorite. I also really enjoyed Tan's, but Jonathan's was fascinating. He has had a much more dark past than I expected, and he's still so young. It was fascinating to learn about where he grew up, like in a less than progressive small town, how he got out of there and got into doing hair, and then how he got into drugs, and how he, you know, had a pretty unsafe lifestyle for quite a while. His book was really wonderful. Then I read Harry Potter 6. Then in October, book number 33 was Essentialism. This I actually gave to someone this Christmas, and I would highly recommend it to anybody who feels overwhelmed or who feels like they're spinning their wheels and they feel like they're super busy, but not as productive as they would like. And feeling like all they do is work or all they do is have tasks, but they never have any downtime. Essentialism was recommended actually by Chelsea Handler. She said it was like the best book that she's read in the last few years and it helped her and me as well to just be much more singular focused on a task and basically picking what's important to you and what you need to do and then not having as many things to do in your life or as many commitments because, you know, we can't do everything. It's basically helping you find the essentials in your life. And it was wonderful. I listened to it. It was pretty clinical, but I'll, I, I, will, I will be surprised if it's not on my list again next year. I'm sure I'll listen to it again. Number 34 was Dear Girls by Ali Wong, which was a collection of letters to her girls. And it's basically like, you know, a bunch of funny stories. And it was fine. It was fine. I really like her comedy specials on Netflix. I would love to see her do comedy. It wasn't necessary. It, it was fine. It was fine. Into November, I listened to Badass again. You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. I said I listen to it every year, and I listened to it in November. Then I read Harry Potter, the last one, and... <sighs> It was quite the ending, wasn't it? Quite the ending. Mel Robbins is another one of my favorite authors. The Five Second Rule is a book that I recommend to everyone. Again, if you're feeling overwhelmed or if you're feeling like you procrastinate. She has some interesting compilations on Audible where it's basically like life coaching sessions that she records. And so I listened to Take Control of Your Life and it was fabulous. It was so interesting. It was helping different people in different situations, but all very relatable get over whatever they're like pinpointing their fear and then helping them get over it to take control of their life. It was wonderful. So fascinating. Now we're into December. Um, I'm Fine and Other Lies, which is a book by Whitney Cummings. I obviously like to listen to books by female comedians. As you can probably see, there's a bit of a pattern. I like to listen to self-improvement and then something a little bit lighter, and then maybe a little bit of fiction, and then some self-improvement, and it depends what's in like the Mare Reads Book Club as well. That was another one. And I just started listening to her podcast, and it's been pretty funny. I really enjoyed her interview with Dan Levy of Schitt's Creek. Just last night, I finished Super Attractor by Gabby Bernstein, which is fun. It's kind of like bookending 2019. As I started with the Judgment Detox, The Universe Has Your Back was in the middle, and now I just finished reading Super Attractor, which was the 2019 finale for the Mary Reads Book Club, and it was so good. I want the actual copy. I just had the Kindle. I want to be able to like go back and take notes. I have so many screenshots on my phone. And then the last book of 2019, which I just finished, is called Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forleo. She is um, like a business coach and an entrepreneur, and um, she has Marie TV on YouTube, and she has a really wonderful website. I bought her B-School course two years ago, I want to say, I think it was. And the book's good. I think the overall message is good that everything is figure outable. There's always a way no matter what. Yeah, I would recommend other books ahead of that one, but it was still a helpful listen and there were some, some good takeaways in there. So those are the 40 books that I read in 2019. If you're still here, I'm going to cheers you with my water. 
those are the 40 books that I read in 2019. Read, listened to, on my Kindle, actual books. I find that I can listen to a lot more books, um, like get through them more, because I listen to them while I'm making breakfast or I'm in the shower or doing my makeup. I find it feels like a really productive use of my time. In 2020, my goal is to pick probably five books that I already own that I've never read and re read those, as well as listening to new ones and picking up new ones and, you know, still doing the Mary Reads Book Club. I just announced um, in yesterday's video, if you missed it, that the book that we're going to read heading into 2020, which I happen to just have right here because we did a Facebook Live. I was sitting here right last night. This Girl on Fire, again, by Kara Alba-Leba. As you know, I just mentioned I read two of her books this year. I think I have every single one of her books now, and this is her latest, Girl on Fire. It says, How to Choose Yourself, Burn the Rule Book, and Blaze Your Own Trail in Life and Business. Let me know what you read in 2019, if you have any reading goals for 2020. Um, if you don't have any, that's okay. Maybe just have a goal to read, like, a book every other month, or to read for five minutes before bed. I know it can feel daunting to fit that time in, but um, it is just such a great break from screen time or from Netflix or from work. And you know, so you could like learn something or do some self-improvement. And uh, hopefully one of your reads in 2020 is Finding Your Cape by me. <laughs> Had to say it. Okay, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out in today's Vlogmas and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.